What is going on guys? Vanity here, back with volume 20 of the In The Style Of series, this time reverse engineering the sound of Lido. This is the composition I'm going to be taking you through today. The chapter times for each segment are, as always, in the pinned comment below. Firstly, I'd like to start with saying that Lido's sound is extremely hard to pin down, as he doesn't have one singular sound. I think with a lot of great artists, this is the case, as evolution and growth are all part of being a creative. This was my interpretation of Lido's sound, which at the least includes the typical elements you'd find in his music, minus the vocals. I based his composition around the first track from his album Everything, Catharsis, to give myself and you our reference point for this track. He really is a producer's producer. I love listening to his music as being a producer myself, I can hear the detail and creativity that goes into each one of his productions. I think that this is due in part to his background, starting off in the music industry as a Norwegian pop singer whose DJ was Kashmir Kat. He certainly got an interesting past. I think it's also one of the worst kept secrets in electronic music that he also produces and releases music under the alias Trippy Turtle. I'm not going to speak on the pillars of Lido sound as I've instead tied them into the given instruments and techniques throughout this tutorial. I'd like to start things off with the synthesizer elements in this composition. Together, they both sound like this. Before I jump into the synthesis, I wanted to start with a more important production philosophy. I think one of the main issues producers have with creating synths is having some kind of direction. You can learn the parameters on each section of a synth in an evening, so I don't think knowing what a certain control does is the issue. When I'm producing a track, I have regular breaks in where I come away from the computer for say 10 minutes to think about how to proceed. I ask questions such as how do I want the synth line to sound, what's the meaning or feeling going to be, or what's the vibe? Lido also shares a similar principle. His is more about having a concept or idea before the project has even been created, which will direct all of his efforts to that singular outcome. Before you get into a car, you always have your destination in mind. Think about what would happen if you didn't. You just drive around aimlessly for hours, having nowhere to go. So for the chord based synth line, I'm using Serum as a starting point. I'll just solo it for you guys. At least for me, it's important I start with chords. I'll leave Ableton recording and just jam for 30 minutes or so. I'll then listen back and find something to arrange into a 16 bar loop. In a lot of Lido's records, his chords are the centerpiece with the more melodical elements happening all around them. Don't aim for perfection either. I did not play everything in as you can see here. There was a lot of clicking and dragging notes around until something worked. Creating music isn't a sexy process. It's pretty boring to watch unless you're a musician. I think it's important to remember that humans are imperfect creatures. You don't succeed because you have no weaknesses. You succeed because you find your unique strengths and focus on developing habits around them. Everyone struggles take solace in that. If I remove all of the plugins on this chain and then play you the same sound again, you'll hear how simple it really is.
It's just a sawtooth wave with some unison added to both oscillators to spread the sound out. I've got the sub oscillator turned on too here, just to give it some bottom end, but the LFO tool is what is creating the movement. I've been sticking to Ableton plugins only for mixing, but the truth is I do need some third party stuff for actually creating and manipulating sounds, so I hope you guys don't mind that. LFO tool is by the same guys that make Serum and cost $50, so nothing crazy. We've got a simple curve that's modulating the cutoff frequency over here. If I play it again, you'll see this little blue dot bouncing around here as the cutoff is being opened up further and then closed. I'm using the simple delay plugin here to spread the chords out using the Hass effect. When listening to Lido's tracks, it's important to remember that the synth line isn't just one huge synth, but multiple that are going on all around you. What I've got going on here is a basic example of this. Lido will go a lot more in depth with each sound and their placement in the mix. You can also use stereo imaging tools, the Hass effect like myself, pitch doubling, and plenty more to achieve similar results. The EQ here is just rolling everything away under 100Hz to leave room for the bass. I've also got this on the group bus which I'll talk about in just a minute. The Effectrix plugin is providing a vinyl styled pitch down effect every 16 bars. It's one of those plugins that I find myself using in nearly every project just to add something a little extra into the track. I know many producers have trouble arranging their work and using a plugin like Effectrix can help to add more interest into a repeating 16 bar pattern but the truth is not every track has to be four minutes long 60 seconds is cool two minutes is fine let the track dictate the length not some unspoken rule that we've decided as a society every track must adhere to in Lido's music, I found the arrangement very interesting. He's not repeating chunks of the track over and over again, copying and pasting 16 bars. The motive in his track stays the same and everything changes around that. The principle is repeated across the whole album actually, even with him reusing some of the same samples across different tracks. Each track on the album feels like a different journey, but you're still in the same world, and I think that's the right approach for an album. Alright, moving on to the second synth line that's providing the melody, which sounds like this, soloed. The actual notes come from the same chord pattern, just without the chords. To complement the chords, I wanted something more melodical that didn't play on top of them, but more with them. The sound itself is just a preset from Spire, which I've actually found to be pretty great at finding these type of plucky patches. My actual reason for picking it though was because Lido also uses it, and obviously I wanted to get something similar to his sound. I've spread them out slightly by doubling them, panning one left and the other right. Now again, this is a basic technique. Lido is big on panning the melodies around the chords, so I'd recommend spending more time to get everything to sit right in the mix. There's no other processing on here. I've saved it all for the group bus, which consists of just an EQ rolling off at 100Hz with a notch out at 500Hz just to remove some of the muddy frequencies. The compressor is taking off around 3 decibels of gain reduction, just keeping both sounds together and sitting in their space in the mix. The last thing I'm doing on here is sending the synth group to my short reverb return bus. This time I'm using the Convolution Reverb Pro, which I believe actually comes with Ableton, either that or Max for Live. I got it with the sweet version at least anyway. You can download it via Ableton if you've got a license, as it's part of the Max for Live Essentials bundle. I'm using one short plate reverb on return A, and then a long chamber reverb on return B. Also, this whole project is available on samples by Vanity. It's also free from my $10 a month and above Patreons. I'd now like to move on to the percussion. Altogether, it sounds like this. It's made up from a can opening, a loop from my Monty Booker sample pack, and two separate recordings of bicycle wheels. 
The percussion setup was inspired by Lido. You can hear the bike wheels in the Catharsis record and the can opening in Murder. You can find sounds such as these from freesound.org. All of these sounds actually did come from that site as it's a great place for finding and downloading all kinds of found sounds. Another example of Lido's use of found sounds can be heard in Tell Me How You Feel. There's a section just before the drop where the track zaps between three different emotions, angry, happy, and sad. The angry section contains breaths, bass sounds, rumbles, and a scream. The happy section has bees buzzing, roads, flutes, chimes, and bird samples, and the sad has a rain sample, cellos, and a girl crying. This gives us a glimpse into each emotion separated by white noise, which is emulating the zapping through them. If you're wondering how I know all that, as it's pretty impossible to gauge it just by listening to the track, I'm going to speak about it when I cover the kick drum, as it ties in with this, and I want to speak about it all in one go. Lido really spends a lot of time on creating his percussion from fan sounds. I can see him easily having 20 or 30 channels dedicated to just this one group alone. It can take a while to get something sounding actually musical from using just a bunch of random sounds that you can find in most households. It would be much easier just to grab a hi-hat loop and call it a day. But this is really what separates a music producer from a beat maker. Not the singular instance of what I just said, but what I'm really saying, the detail. Tracks take a long time to make. People that are churning out one or more in a day are taking shortcuts that's going to show in the long run. It's also why they never develop their own sound. Something that you cannot say is true about Lido, although I think Lido has developed more of a style than a sound. I'm not going to get into the differences between the two in this video or say that one is better than the other, but you've got to decide which one you're more drawn to for yourself, as otherwise you're going to be fighting a losing battle. Okay, back to the processing chain. I've got nothing fancy going on here, just a standard EQ and compressor configuration. On the bike wheels, I've got one pan 25 to the right and the other 25 to the left. And the whole percussion bus is being sent to my B reverb channel, which is the longer Hall reverb. This puts the percussion in a different space compared to the synthesizers, as they occupy the same frequency range and the synths definitely win the loudest battle. But again, this is a cut down version of what Lido would have going on in his tracks. If he had had say 20 channels of various percussion hits, there's a lot more that can be done in terms of panning sounds around in the stereo field. Don't forget about automating the pan pots too to create some interesting effects especially on a delayed sound, sweeping across from left to right, for example. All right, onto the snare, which sounds like this, soloed. It's made up from just two hits, a clap and a rim shot. I tried to base this track around Catharsis, the first track on Lido's Everything album, just so I included all of his typical elements, and this also acted as kind of an anchor point for this track. You could say that it inspired this track. The rim shot laid with the clap was something I heard various iterations of across the album. The clap for the bright tone and timbre, something that really cuts through the mix, and then the rim shot for the pure punch. The group processing is the same as I've got on every group bus in here, so I won't cover that again. The only other thing I've done is add a slight amount of reverb onto the snare. Not too much, however, as you want the snare to be right at the front of the mix. All of the drums you just heard, as well as a couple hundred more, are from my Lido sample pack, available on Samples by Vanity. I've also created a package over on my Patreon, where for $20 a month, you can pick any two out of the four sample packs released each month. Also guys, I'm going to be doing a giveaway at 10,000 subscribers, which I can honestly not thank each and every one of you enough for. I know it sounds super cheesy, but I really honestly love creating these tutorials, and I'm so grateful that they're helping people across the world improve themselves as a producer, engineer, musician, and creative. But I wanted to ask you guys, what should I actually give away? I want it to be something important in music production, perhaps a pair of headphones or a MIDI controller. Drop me a comment with your thoughts. It's just my way of saying thank you for the support. I won't be using the competition as a way of promoting this channel. I'm just mentioning it in here as you guys were already watching this without any knowledge of the giveaway. Thank you in advance. All right, onto the kick drum, which sounds like this, soloed.
All right, so I've got a few points I'd like to touch on in here. Firstly, that little extra sound in there comes from a hydraulics recording, again from freesound.org. Remember when I said earlier in this tutorial about how I knew the sounds Lido was using in the Tell Me How To Feel track? It's not some big secret, I just wanted to mention it when I spoke about the kick, as it all ties in. Lido was invited to speak at Berklee College of Music, in where he shared an insight into his workflow and techniques, giving an inside look at the select session files of his productions. It's available online, and I've provided a link to it in the pinned comment below. It's a really good watch that enabled me to learn a ton about him, and I've sprinkled it throughout this tutorial to share with you guys. He mentioned in this talk that he's been using sounds from hydraulics laid with his kick drums to create this kind of sucking effect which he wanted to point out wasn't being caused by side chaining as he doesn't often use that effect you can hear the hydraulic sound in his track murder at 1 minute and 12 seconds in i found this approach very interesting as i don't often come across producers that clearly add in so much detail into their tracks detail that i may add won't be noticed by 90 percent or so of the listeners only those who are really analyzing his work with these tutorials, often it's my own interpretation of what I'm hearing as to how it can be made. Truthfully, there are numerous ways any sound can be made. It's down to the producer as to which road they take. Which is why I liked being able to give you some of the cliff notes from the Lido Masterclass throughout this tutorial, as it's exactly how he works. I've noticed a lot of producers can be super secretive in music production, thinking that they own some technique or sound, and it's this that's going to keep them apart from the rest. The truth is though, if you're relying on secrets to keep yourself in business, it isn't going to last long. So please, after this video, check out the Lido Masterclass, and make sure to take plenty of notes, as you'll be learning a ton. Okay, onto the bass, which sounds like this soloed. I went for a simple sine wave sub bass coming from Serum with the portamento switched on to around 50% just to allow it to glide between the notes. I've added an EQ to remove anything above 100Hz and a glue compressor keeping it at a constant dynamic range. Lido's basses can be extremely diverse. For example, in his talk at Berkeley, he mentioned using Mr. Carmack's 808s, as well as how the bass on So Cold is simply him touching an aux chord and pitching it up and down to suit. I think the main takeaway from this man is to be extremely creative and not rush things. They say you have a lifetime to release your first album and only a few months for your second, but this really isn't true anymore now that the musicians are in charge of releasing their music. Artists like Taku only drop a project every now and again. There was two years between his last two EPs, but his fanbase didn't forget about him. It grew more in that time. For those that have asked me, I do believe it's much better to release an EP or an album as opposed to a single track. A single song is forgotten about, it's not really enough to get into. An album is more of a journey that you can lose yourself in for an hour. And from the creator's perspective, it's something you can put a bunch of your thoughts and emotions into to tell your own story from that part of your life. Alright, I've gone from a sub-bass lesson to speaking on philosophy. Either way, I hope it all helps. Onto the mastering chain. I've again just stuck to using all of Ableton's plugins for. I've kept it limited to three plugins. Starting with an EQ, I'm rolling off around 250Hz and boosting at 12kHz on the sides of the track. The boost at 11kHz is for that air sound. I always find it quite difficult to describe, but it's really obvious when you hear it. So have a play with boosting at 12kHz on the sides of your tracks, and let me know if you like how it sounds. But it really does just lift the top end, especially on headphones, and I've always found it to sound really great on vocals. Anything under 250Hz in a track should be in mono anyway, and this just ensures nothing below that frequency is present on the sides of the record. I've then got the glue compressor, which I'm aiming for around 2 to 3 decibels of gain reduction at any given time. Remember to set it on a low ratio too. I've then got Ableton's limiter, and again I'll aim for a maximum of 3 decibels of gain reduction. On the spam plug in here, my RMS needs to be around minus 10 decibels. If it's not, I've then got to go back to the track and keep tweaking. I will always leave 0.2 decibels of headroom for any intersample peaks on the limiter too. Now just a side note, I wouldn't recommend mastering with Ableton plugins unless it's just for personal use. I would never use them for client work. As much as I love Ableton stock plugins, it really is night and day when you compare a master from them with some Something that's been run through UAD plugins, but obviously this will also depend on how skilled the mastering engineer is working on your project. 
All right, that's all I've got for you today, guys. As always, thank you for watching, and remember to keep sharing your suggestions for future tutorials in the comments section below. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace. Yeah.